Do you have things you want to do with your life and at the same time feel totally trapped and unable to move forward? I'm Hannah Mason, and in today's Spark, we're going to be exploring the stories that don't serve you. In our book, The Size of Your Dreams, that Dave and I wrote together, there's a character named Jared who actually was challenging for me to engage with and write because his whole perspective on life is really quite different from mine. And he's a guy and um, he had just this whole attitude towards school that just like school was dumb and he's not that into learning in the way that school teaches and he's just frustrated and he's totally turned off. And at a certain point in his high school education, pretty early on, he just decided he didn't want to have anything to do with it. He knew that he needed a high school degree mostly because he got a lot of social pressure from his parents and from society telling him that he was supposed to, but he wasn't going to enjoy it and he wasn't going to throw himself into it and he wasn't going to dedicate any of his time to any school activities. And so his goal was to just get by and he states this right at the beginning of the book. But then over the course of the book, as the other characters in who, who are in his class with him start doing amazing things with their lives, setting audacious goals and taking big risks to go after them, he suddenly realizes he's missing out on an incredible opportunity. So The Size of Your Dreams is a personal growth novel where there are four high school kids who have a mentor named Mr. Griffin, and he teaches them an insane amount of personal growth tools for to help them set goals, develop their identity, and manifest the lives of their dreams. And Jared's watching all of these people do this amazing stuff. And meanwhile, he's just doing the minimum he has to do so that he can pass this class. And then something really interesting happens. Another character in the book, I'm not going to spoil it for you too much because you totally have to read this book. Another character does something that's so incredibly courageous and daring that it forces Jared to re-question the narrative that he's been playing about his life and about school. And he recognizes that he's put Mr. Griffin in the same box that he puts all teachers, but suddenly notices that Mr. Griffin isn't like everyone else and that maybe this guy he could learn from. And an amazing thing happens. I want to show you this section of the book. Jared walks into class with a kind of a different energy than he's had before. And Mr. Griffin notices it right away. So he asks him to speak. And you know what Jared says? I want to be in this class. And... The main character, the protagonist in the book, who is, um, who's doing the writing in, in the first person, he says, haven't you always been part of this class? And Jared said, not really. I sit in the back and do as little as possible. The only reason I even read my cards each day is so that I won't flunk and lose the credit. And Mr. Griffin asks him, so what changed? And he said, you know, at first I was just like blowing it off and it didn't make any sense. But then this other guy really inspired me. And so he basically says that he wants to be in the class. And what does that mean for him? He wants to actually set goals for his life and really chase after them. And this character has such a massive transformation. By the end of the book, he builds a really successful business and makes incredible life decisions he's so enthusiastic about. He's taken full ownership and responsibility for his life. But the first thing he had to do was be willing to question and rewrite one of the stories that was a bedrock of his life. And that is that he had nothing to get from school. He had nothing to get from teachers. And he totally rewrote that. Nobody did that for him. He did that for himself. That parent that I keep talking about that's in the frontal lobe that we develop as we mature, he took that part of himself and he said, hey, Jared, wake up. You're missing out on what might be the most amazing opportunity for you to make a massive shift in your life. And he took that and he owned it. And it's just so fun to read him and all the other characters go through their growth and grow through their transformation. And each one of them questions the basic beliefs that they have that are underlying their lives and maybe some of the ways that they're holding their, themselves back or feeling bad about themselves or not being successful. And you also have that. And I for sure also have that, right? We all have beliefs. We all have stories about ourselves, about other people, about the world that are keeping us from living the lives of our dreams. So I want to ask you, take some time and think about 
What are the stories that are holding you back? And as soon as I ask that question, I know that stuff is going to come up. You might think that because when you were three, you got on stage and you made a total mess of yourself that you're just not someone who can go on stage. Or like my husband, Dave, he had this really strong belief that He couldn't get in front of the camera. And you know what? He realized that belief was totally getting in his way. And so he has spent the past few months every single day getting in front of the camera and saying, I love the camera and the camera loves me and jumping up and down. And he's literally brainwashed himself with a whole new narrative. And you know what? He's become someone the camera loves. He looks great in front of the camera now. If you haven't seen his videos, Mastodon's, where he shares really big, hairy ideas, I highly recommend you check them out because he's got amazing ideas to share. And now he's so comfortable in front of the camera, he's sharing them in a way that's exciting and engaging for all of us. You have those things that in your life are also holding you back. Wake up that parent, that frontal lobe, and take over and take a big start and say, what can I rewrite? What story can I rewrite that's gonna totally change my life for the better? And if you need help, going through that process of creating an exciting vision for your life and creating a narrative that's going to support that vision and then setting actionable goals and having accountability for manifesting those goals, coaching can really help. I happen to have time in my schedule. I'm here. And if you want to get in touch with me to set up a discovery session, you can do so via my website at hanamason.com or right here on Facebook. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day. Want to experience more clarity, vibrance, and joy in your life? Book a discovery session with Hannah at hannamason.com slash joy.